I'm Kara Knightley, and I'm here to talk about resistivity in wires and electrical resistance. Electrical resistance, I'm going to talk about it in terms of what's happening on the molecular scale, the smallest scale. This is given by a big R. Sometimes it's a little E, but big R is good enough. On a small scale, and then I'll talk about it on the on a bigger scale, which means Ohm's law. So the first thing we'll talk about, what's happening in that wire, huh? We'll just take an electrical wire, and this wire's got a certain area. Now, electrons are flowing. If you say you've got a negative charge here, positive charge here, potential, the electrons are going to flow in this direction. That's going to be your current. The more room they have, the more room there is for them to flow. A six-lane highway can handle more flow than a one-lane highway. So what happens is the wider the, the wider the wire, the more flow you get. This is a lot like fluid resistance. You know, remember that the wider the, the wider the pipe was, the lower the fluid resistance. The wider the wire, the less the electrical resistance. Now, there's the length of the wire. These electrons are moving through the wire. And they're getting bounced, they're smacking into the atoms and then getting pulled off and smacking them, getting pulled off. And the longer they got to go, the more stuff they smack into. And so the longer the wire, the more resistance there is. So L is the length of the wire. God, what's that, cooties? Okay, yeah, it is. So uh, the next thing is, what's the resistivity? Uh, you saw earlier how the electrons, they smack into the atom and the atom releases another electron. Well, that process varies from atom to atom, different types of atoms. So, you know, copper is different than silver at it. Glass is terrible at passing electrons on. It's an insulator. Whereas uh, copper is great at passing electrons on. It's a conductor and it has a lower resistivity. And so the individual atom's ability to, to keep flow from moving is called the resistivity. It's given by a row. I know it looks like mass density, but in this case, it's resistivity. Okay, and the units are typically, uh, you know, if these are uh, like uh, centimeters squared is the area, say, and the length is in centimeters, then the resistivity would be, uh, usually you get something like micro-ohms, which is a millionth of an ohm, times a centimeter. The more the resistivity, the, the higher the resistance. And here's how it's put together. Electrical resistance in a wire is equal to the resistivity of the material, which increases the resistance as it gets bigger, times the length, which increases the resistance as it gets bigger, divided by the area. Directly proportional to the resistivity and the length, inversely proportional to the area. Well, let's do an example. Let's take a gold wire, and uh, the resistivity for gold, if you look it up, it's 2.44, well, micro-ohms times centimeter. Uh, let's, uh, let's pick a length. Let's say the length is... Um, a thousand centimeters. It's ten meters long. It's thirty feet. So it's a thousand centimeters. And uh, the area. Oh, let's do the radius. Let's say the radius is uh, two tenths. Let's see. Let's say. Let's say a half a millimeter. That's a pretty thin wire. That's well, that's about right for wire. So it's a half a millimeter. And I want that in centimeters. So let's see. There's a. Uh, there are, uh, there's one centimeter for every 10 millimeters. So it's going to be 0 0.05 centimeters. Now, I want to know, oh, there's my wire. I want to know, I'll put AU for gold. What's the resistance? Well, the resistance is the resistivity times the length over the area. And I have everything I need, except I don't have the length. But it's a circular pipe. 
I mean, I don't have the area, excuse me. It's a circular pipe, so the area is pi times the radius squared, which is, uh, let's see, pi times 0 0.05 centimeters, and that's squared. Minus three centimeters squared. Right, because this is a half 0 0.05 times 0 0.05, that's going to be like a 40 times a 1600, three over 16, like one five hundredth. Yeah, that's better. All right. So the resistivity, the resistance is the resistivity, which is 2.44 instead of micro ohms. That means times 10 to the minus six because it's micro. So I'm going to say 2.44 times 10 to the minus 6 ohms times centimeters, there's my micro right there, times the area, which is 7.85 times 10 to the minus 3 centimeters squared. Oh, I did that wrong. I'm sorry. Follow the formula. That's why you write the, uh, the working equation, because it helps, because you've got to reflect back. I see that. I've got my length here of 1,000 centimeters. One-to-one -one correspondence, and that's divided by 7.85 times 10 to the minus 3 centimeters squared. Centimeters times centimeters of centimeters squared cancels with these. I'll have ohms, and that's going to be 0 0.311 ohms, less than a less than a third of an ohm. Now think about it, that's like a standard wire. Gold's a good conductor, but uh, it's not that much better than copper. It's over 30 feet long. This is like a 33 foot long piece of wire, and the resistance is only a third of an ohm. Generally your resistance problems, your losses, are not in your wire itself. I mean, the wire will get heated up, but generally it's more in the connections. Because you can see the wires themselves, they don't have very much resistance. Now we should talk about Ohm's Law.